and welcome to my channel. My name is Grace and nope, pumpkin wasn't gonna stay on my head. I'm trying to see how long I can keep a pumpkin on my head. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so I am coming at you with a fall book tag that is called the It's Finally Fall book tag. And I have my questions all written down right here because I'm filming on my phone. So I had to actually use, you know, real paper. Can you see this right here? Tag people. People will be tagged at the end of this video. So the very first question is, in fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a really vivid setting. And for that, I'm gonna go with Spinning Silver by Naomi Novak. It, the setting in this book is so wintry and it's snowing all the time and the characters are traveling around in like snow sleighs all the time. The characters are always huddling up by the fireplace and they're always making like hot stew and hot porridge and they're crocheting blankets by the fire and you can just like feel like the cold outside and the cozy inside. This is like the perfect atmospheric, snowy, wintry, fall, cozy kind of book. Question number two, nature is beautiful, but also dying <laughs> during the fall because the leaves are all turning, falling off and everything. So name a book that is beautifully written, but deals with like deeper kind of darker themes of like maybe death or grief or trauma or something like that. For that, I'm gonna go with Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. It is one of the most beautiful books, like beautifully written books that I have ever read. Let me read you just like a little bit of the prologue. It was night again. The Waystone Inn lay in silence, and it was a silence of three parts. The most obvious part was a hollow, it was a hollow echoing quiet made by things that were lacking. If there had been wind, it would have sighed through the trees, set the inn's creaking signs on its hooks, and brushed the silence down the road like trailing autumn leaves. In fact, there were none of these things, and so the silence remained. Anyway, it's just absolutely beautifully written, and like that kind of writing just like is throughout the entire book. So this book is a fantasy novel. The main character, his name is Koth, and he is a wizard. He's like recounting his life and his life growing up, going to magic school. And part of his life story is when he was very young, his parents were murdered. And a large chunk of this book actually um, is him processing that trauma and processing that grief of his parents' murder. Um, as he like also hunts for their killers and things like that throughout the book and throughout um, his magic school journey. So, Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. It's beautiful, it's deep, it's dark, deals with grief and trauma, and very, very magical. The third question is, fall is the back to school season. Name a nonfiction book that taught you something. For this, I am going to go with Money, Master the Game, The Seven Steps to Financial Freedom by Tony Robbins. I normally don't talk about the nonfiction books that I read because like, do you guys really wanna hear about those? I don't know. But um, I read this on Scribd. Actually, I found it on Scribd over the summer and it was actually really, really interesting and insightful. It talks a lot about like investing and it talks about like 401ks, all the different money terms and things like that, that like I had heard all these terms before, but I never really put definitions to them. Like I, you know, I mean, I know I'm an adult and I feel like I should have some of this stuff down. So I felt like a real adult after I finished that one. I was like, ah, I understand. I understand something in the adult world. <laughs> if you're looking for a good book on like finances and money and things like that, I actually do recommend this one. It was really insightful and it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot of terms and things that like I just didn't really know before I read it. The next question is, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend time with people you love. Name your favorite fictional family. And of course, everybody just wants to say the Weasleys from Harry Potter because like, who wouldn't want to hang out with the Weasleys? But I'm actually gonna pick another one. The spaceship crew from the long way to a small angry planet. Oh my gosh, I love this crew. And I would go spend some time on the Wayfarer and I would be a part of their crew and I would just hang out on their spaceship forever. And they're all from different parts of the galaxy and they're all so diverse and they all have their own cultural backgrounds that they all have to like just get used to each other and get used to the ways other people think and the ways other people walk and other people's like even sleeping habits. And 
and it's just so fun to watch them as a crew bond and to watch them love on each other and to watch them take care of each other and then to watch them rescue each other and it's just i loved this book and i loved the family that was like created by this crew on this spaceship the next question is fall is the perfect time for storytelling by the fireplace share a book in which somebody is telling a story and for this one i am going with the graphic novel saga now saga the whole story of saga is actually told by the little girl right there that you see right there and her two parents are from completely different races and their races in this whole science fiction world hate each other and um so saga is basically just the story of their survival as a family like everybody's hunting them down and she is actually a crossbreed of both these different races so like everybody's hunting them down and um the story is just told from her perspective like looking back on their life and their life on the run and her life as a kid growing up on the run and like there's there's so many um saga graphic novels i am not caught up i'm not at all caught up with these graphic novels whoop can't show you that picture <laughs> I love this picture. This is like my favorite picture of all time of her like reading on the spaceship with her helmet and her gum and everything. Oh my god. So anyway, Saga is actually very adult though. I do just want to throw that in there. If you don't like kind of adulty kind of stuff, it uh, might not be for you. But it's an awesome story. It's an absolutely amazing story. Very gritty, very real interplanetary battles like to like interstellar battles and spaceships and of this family like just trying to survive. Next question is, the nights are getting darker. Name a dark and creepy read. Okay, you guys. This one doesn't look dark and creepy by the beautiful cover. However, <laughs> shit gets creepy up in this book. Okay, so this is book, this is Invasion of the Tearling. This is book two in the Queen of the Tearling book series. And um, so in this book series, there are multiple queens of this world. One of these queens is super evil and she is bonded to this creepy fire demon thing. And whenever the fire demon kind of scenes happen, like it's freaky, like shit gets freaky in this book. Like I was genuinely disturbed by some of the interactions with this fire demon and just some of the ways that that played out it was genuinely disturbing mm -mm. nope it was the creepiest thing i had read in a while so just nope mm -mm. the next question is the days are getting colder name a short heartwarming read that can warm up somebody's cold and rainy day I'm gonna go with Sight Witch by Susan Denard. It's a very short and it's fantasy and I don't know if the entire book is heartwarming. I'm not sure that it has the most heartwarming ending or not because it is like the middle book in a series. The plot line doesn't get completely wrapped up in this story. However, I just found there were so many heartwarming situations and so many heartwarming things in this book. So the main character's name is Ryber and she lives in this monastery and they are training her in her magic and magical abilities and like sight witchery. Her roommate and her best friend is also living in this monastery with her and also being trained to be a sight witch and one day her best friend goes missing and so basically it's just her journey like searching for her best friend and looking for her best friend and i just found it like super heartwarming like the links that ryber goes to to like find her best friend and rescue her and even there's like flashbacks of like moments and situations between her and her best friend and i just found all like the best friend stuff just super heartwarming and i just i loved it the next question is fall luckily returns every year name a book that you love to return to and that you love to come back to like an old favorite for me that's gonna be the hobbit by J.R.R. tolkien the hobbit is one of the most nostalgic books for me i read the hobbit every year at least for quite a few years growing up and it's i think probably one of my most reread books that i have and i just i love bilbo like he's such an interesting 
character. He's such an interesting hobbit. And I almost said like he's such an interesting person, but I'm like, no, he's such an interesting hobbit. <laughs> and he just, I love how he's just so open for adventure and he's so open for doing things differently than like normal hobbits would. Because normal hobbits aren't supposed to have adventures and go fighting dragons and things like that. And Bilbo is just so on board for adventure and he's just so on board to be different and to like take the path that like isn't typical for his species, you know? So I love it. I love Gandalf and I love like the riddles in the dark and I still like to go back and read all the riddles in the dark and just like giggle and Bilbo is just so smart. He's just such a smart character. This is probably my most reread book that I love to return to. And for the very last question, fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite reading accessories. Oi! This is Gideon. It is my favorite reading accessory. I'm gonna let him go before he bites me. <laughs> He'll like get on the bed with me and like snuggle up by my feet while I'm reading. And I love that cat. He is the best snuggle reading buddy ever. And finally, I get to tag some people. All right, you guys ready? Alex Black, you've been tagged. You're so awesome. Thank you for shouting out my channel all the times that you shout out my channel and you are awesome. You are tagged. The Grey Lioness, you are also tagged. I thought of you this morning when I put my Star Wars shirt on. I was like, oh, the Grey Lioness is gonna love seeing this in a video. I thought of you specifically. So you are also tagged to go do this video. Booktube Goddess, have you done a fall video recently? I haven't seen any fall videos on your channel recently. Anyway, you are tagged and I expect to see some leaves in the fall video from you. <laughs> no, you really don't have to, I promise. Mimo, if you want to do this tag, you are also tagged. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you guys so much. You're so freaking beautiful. And I will totally see you in the next video. Bye.